When it comes to politics this week, health has been certainly a hot topic. How much does it matter when it comes to picking a leader? We thought we'd turn to our British friend, political satirist Rick Adams, for some perspective from over there. And Rick, so glad that you could join us. This really came to the forefront, obviously, when Hillary Clinton collapsed, almost collapsed, rather, after uh, suffering from pneumonia. That's right, Michaela. As you know, the UK's been around a little while longer than you in the US. And, and because we're like an older sibling, we get to try things out before you do, like driving or being allowed to drink beer. And it's especially so in politics. You, you may have noticed we're already on our second female prime minister. So come on, catch up, will you? <laughs> We're trying. So let's talk about that a little bit, Rick. A lot of questions about Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump uh, and their health. What can we learn from you Brits? Us Brits? Well, when it comes to questioning whether a female politician's healthy enough to lead us, well, we've been there, done that too. In the battle for the prime ministership, Theresa May was hit by a foul whispering campaign that wondered if she was tough enough to lead, considering she had type 1 diabetes. Well, according to the WHO, that's the World Health Organization, over 420 million people in the world have type 1. That's almost the equivalent, obviously, of nearly everyone in the US. So that's a lot, and the world still hasn't exploded yet. <laughs> yeah, I like the way you put the dot on that. If you're looking back through history, uh, what have you found uh, about how much health matters in terms of our leadership? Nick, if we take a look and a quick flip through time, we can look at past leaders for comparison. Winston Churchill suffered from acute depression. President Roosevelt had paralysis from polio. President Kennedy had an autoimmune disease called Addison's. Tony Blair had tachycardia. Genghis Khan may have had a respiratory illness, but we couldn't find his computer hack in to, to sort of confirm that. But, oh, and by the way, he also was a homicidal maniac, by the way. So anyway, besides the point, <laughs> look, don't get me wrong. Focusing on health <clears throat> is, well, a healthy thing to do, right? But it doesn't stay healthy when we're relying on the candidates themselves for clarity. And failing that, perhaps the next step is a live debate whilst candidates have a full medical exam by the Surgeon General. Cough, please. <laughs> uh, we could see their blood pressure spike on live TV and whilst they take a question, we could see that would be really interesting, really, wouldn't it? Let's face it. <laughs> but you know everyone here, especially the, the punditry and people watching the election and, and, and voters too, I think, are really hoping to get this health stuff behind everyone and move on to the other pressing issues in the campaign. What? What, you mean focusing on what they actually say and do? That is crazy talk, Michaela. Well, think about it, though. The acid test might be, if you were in a room with these people, who would be most likely to offend your grandmother? And who would you most likely ask to help resolve an argument, say, between you and your sister? And if that's the case, then choosing the smartest, kindest and most compassionate person to lead us would appear to make the most sense of all. It's a complicated world, so let's not judge candidates on their medical scores or how much money they have to swing around, but instead by the highest quality and morality of their deeds. That's how you truly pick a leader, isn't it? <laughs> and there is the view from over there. Rick Adams, always a delight, my dear. Thank you for joining us today. Have a good weekend. Thank you.